There's a man who had a twin brother. And sometimes you get siblings who really function well together, and sometimes you get siblings who fight a lot. And these twins fought a lot. They competed about everything. They had about as different personalities as you could possibly imagine. Well, the younger one uh, cooked up this scheme one day and, and ended up cheating his brother out of a large portion of money. His brother was not so happy about that. The older twin responded by not just threatening, but planning on killing his twin brother. So the younger twin leaves home. He goes and he lives with his uncle, and he works with his uncle for years and years until things start falling apart there. And the only place he knows to go back to is home. But the problem is his brother that he hasn't spoken to in over a decade is still there. And he's sure that if he goes back, his brother will kill him. I'm wondering what to do. He's changed a lot since that beginning. And wondering what to do, he calls out to God. And God says to Jacob, go home. I will be with you. You. There's very few more beautiful words in Scripture than I will be with you. And Esau, even though Esau is extremely angry at, at Jacob, things have changed for Esau. But Jacob doesn't know that. There's a lot of things that Jacob could be afraid about. Jacob is not sure what's going to happen. But when God says, go home, I will be with you, Jacob has nothing more to be afraid of. His grandfather, Abraham, so Jacob returns home and God says, I will be with you. His grandfather, Abraham, was told to leave home, for I will be with you with you. And what this psalmist really hits at is something, if you want to know the fancy term for it, is called God's omnipresence. That God is all present. That God is everywhere. And, you know, in seminary you can sit there and write papers about it and debate and really, you know, what, what's the point when we read scripture, we need to know why this matters to us. Why does it matter that God is everywhere? It matters to me and it gives me a lot of hope. I have hope for tomorrow. I have hope for what's going to happen today. I have hope that no matter what's going on or where that I am, I have hope because God is, is everywhere. And so the psalmist really kind of explores this and digs into this and pulls out certain parts of it. And I want to hit on some of these things. The first thing that the, the psalmist really shows us is that no matter where the psalmist travels, to the depths of the sea, to Sheol, which means the grave, to the skies, to the farthest ends of the earth, it does not matter for God is there. In other words, God is not territorial. And that gives me a lot of hope. And this is profound what the psalmist is saying here because they believed at the time, a lot of people believed that there were a lot of gods and each god not only had only one or two realms of life that they were over, but that there was a specific geographical region in which they were powerful here and they were weak everywhere else. And that is why Pharaoh was so stunned that on the home court of the Egyptian gods, this foreign god named Yahweh comes in there and shatters the power of Egypt because this, is, you're supposed to, this isn't your land. You can't work here. This is the Egyptian land. The Egyptian gods are supposed to rule here. And Yahweh, the God Almighty, shows up and shatters the power. God is everywhere means some things for me. 
And it gives me a lot of hope. God is everywhere geographically. And that means that when you're living in Missouri, and God and the church call you to pastor in Sherman, Texas, you don't have to be afraid because God is in Sherman, Texas. And where I'm going, God is there. And it's not like he's going to show up with me. God has already been here. He has been here since before there were people here. He has been here when there was nothing but, but dirt and grass and whatever else. He has been here long before I was ever thought of. So I am going to God's land if, wherever I go. If you get a job in Durant, guess what? God is in Durant as well. It doesn't matter where you go on this earth. It's the reason why missionaries don't have to be afraid that they're going to be out there on their own. Because yes, there might be hostile people. Yes, they might die. But spiritually, they will never be abandoned because they were going out of the presence of God into the presence of God. Wherever they go, God is there. And God is everywhere also chronologically. Right now, God is preparing good works in advance for you to do 10 years from now. And 10 years ago, God was preparing things in your life for you to do now, in 2017, if you were listening to Him, if you were following Him. I, that gives me hope, because I know that God understands the future far better than I do. And I don't have to know everything. I don't have to have a great plan. I don't have to have some kind of life plan where if I don't follow this, everything's going to fall apart fall apart. All I need to know is God. And God will be there in 10 years. Whether I have everything planned out or not, God will be there. And God was there yesterday, and God is there now, and God will always be. Which means that not only physically can I not go anywhere that the Lord is not, but tomorrow... I will face a God who is the same now. God does not have strong days and weak days, sick days and good days. God is God. And every day he is God. And every moment he is God. And when his people are rebelling, he is God. And when his people are rejoicing, he is God. I am not facing a God tomorrow that might be fluctuating in strength or weaknesses or faithfulness. I am, I am going to be able to call on a God tomorrow that is as strong and steadfast and true as he is now. And that gives me hope. And God is everywhere missionally as well. What I mean is that when God calls you to go talk to your neighbor about Jesus, He's not sending you out there on your own. He's already been in your neighbor's house. He's already been in your neighbor's car. He's already been in your neighbor's cubicle. And wherever your neighbor's eating lunch, he has been there working on their heart, drawing them to him. God is never calling you to live out his mission beyond his arm or his reach or his grace and his power. Everywhere you go when you are following God, you are going in the presence of the Lord. And that gives me Even when I am not seen by mankind, I am still known by God. You ever have moments where you just feel invisible? Any of y'all? Any of y'all ever have moments where you just feel like if you died, no one would notice? People would find out three weeks later and go, oh, good grief, I didn't know they died. There's, there's times that we go through life and we feel like a failure. I do that. There's times in my life that I feel like a failure. And when you look at verse 10, it says, even then, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Even when I feel like a failure. Even when I feel like everything I have held in my hands has fallen apart, God's hand still holds me. Even when I look and I just say, 
I have not made any difference. What am I doing? What's the point? Everything I've touched has fallen apart. God's hand has not left me because everyone around me has looked at me and said, I'm not worth being looked at. That gives me hope because I don't have to worry about what others say or what others do. God's hand still holds me. And God's hand is the eternal hand. God's hand is the perfect hand. His love is perfect and true. And that is the only thing I really need to hold me. That is the only thing I really need to guide me. That's the only thing I need to give me strength when I'm not strong enough to stand on my own feet. Is not everyone around me, though that is helpful too. It is God's holy, loving, perfect, nail-scarred hand that is holding me up. Not just today, but tomorrow. And no matter where I go emotionally and how messed up I feel, and how broken I am God is still there and that gives me hope even when your boss can't remember your name God knows your name how many of y'all even know all of the all the names of your neighbors God knows their names when your family doesn't call God knows you When it seems like no one notices if you're there or not, not only does God still notice you, God still loves you. Amen? In every nursing home in this country, there are some people who never get visited, who never get called. No one ever shows up to see how they're doing, unless they're paid to do so. This gives me hope. Because people might not visit everyone in the nursing home, but God visits them. And God knows their name. And God loves them. And God died for them, even when society has forgotten they're around. Are you not excited this morning knowing that no matter how you feel, and no matter how others look upon you, God still sees you? Praise God for that, right? Praise God. Even when darkness covers me and trouble has assailed me. I love that line in this psalm. Even when darkness covers me. Not when things kind of get gray out there or dim out there. When darkness covers me. We have been in times, we have been in moments where it has felt so dark that we didn't even remember what the light felt like. We didn't even remember what it was like to have hope. We didn't even remember what it was like to not worry or have stress or have a burden upon you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to that moment where there's just so many things were pressing on you that you thought that the only way this was going to end with you shattered and broken? Even when darkness has covered me to the point where I see no light and trouble has gone against me, even then God's hand is there. Praise God, right? We get an amen on that? When my finances are in ruin and I don't know what to do, surprise, surprise, God is bigger than my finances. They might repossess your car, but God still loves you, and God still cares for you, and God still knows you by name and died for you and holds you as his precious child. Even when trouble comes against me, even when my relationships are in ruin, if you are are at the point where You think you might get divorced? God wants to be there with you in that moment and and redeem that marriage. And if you do get divorced, God wants to be there after the divorce to pick you up and to love you and to hold you. No matter where you go, what trouble assails you, you are never in deeper trouble than the love of God. Amen? When all feels lost, God still sees me and God still knows my name when I don't understand the psalmist talks about the womb even before a woman can know she's pregnant even before a woman 
go to a doctor and they can hear the heartbeat of a child. Even before there's any indication that this woman is pregnant. The psalmist says, even before his mother knew, God was forming him. And I don't mean just physically. God was spiritually preparing things in advance for this child that he could be called according to who God is. Even before they know he exists, God knows he exists. And God cares for him. When you are in the womb, you don't understand anything. You don't know anything. You don't have an awareness. Even when you don't know who you are, God knows who you are. Even when you look at this world and you're going through hard times or you're going through situations where you don't understand, you don't have enough facts, you don't have enough knowledge, you don't have something that you can rely upon and say, this is it, I have the answer. Even when you have no answers, even when you don't understand, God is still there. You ever been to that point where just things were in front of you and you did not even know what to do? Am I the only one? God is still there when you don't understand. But you know more Bible verses than I do. You've studied more scripture than I do. You own more commentaries than I do. The Lord's presence in your life is not dependent upon how many Bible verses you have memorized. Praise God for that. Because there's already always somebody who knows more than I do. Especially if you're married. It's probably your spouse. There's always somebody in your life that knows more than you. And God is never looking at you and saying, you don't know enough, therefore I will not be with you. Even when you feel like you know nothing. And you don't understand. God is still there. Amen? And that gives me hope. It gives me hope that God is there no matter where I am on this earth, God is there. It gives me hope that when others ignore me, God knows who I am. It gives me hope that when darkness covers me, God is still there. It gives me hope that God is still there even when I don't understand. And God is also there even when I have sin. Hebrews 6 talks about when we sin, we re-crucify Christ. When we sin, we are the ones beating the flesh off of the back of Jesus. When we sin, we are the ones crushing the crown of thorns upon his head, slicing the scalp from the skull. When we sin, we are the ones spitting in His face and mocking Him. When we sin, we are the ones crying out, crucify Him. When we sin, we are the ones plunging those nails into His wrists and driving them into the wood behind Him that He can die because of us. When we sin, we are the ones crucifying Christ. But have you ever done something Betrayed somebody, did something that you knew they wouldn't like, you gossiped about them, or you failed to follow through a commitment, but they didn't know about it. And you didn't want to talk to them about it, right? You ever had to, maybe you have supposed to have had these conversations, and maybe you haven't always, but there's sometimes that you do things, or something has been broken to the point where you really need to sit down and you look them in the face and you tell them. But you don't want to do that. Why? Who wants to see disappointment and pain in somebody's eyes because of us? Any of y'all, when you're teenagers, ever wrecked the car and you just kind of want to pretend you got a ride home from the house and it, you know, died out of gas or something? 
You don't want to tell your dad you just totaled the car. There's times we don't want to have conversations because we don't want to look in their face and see the pain. But here's the beautiful thing about the fact that God is there even when we sin. The moment we sin, God knows it. God experiences the pain. God experiences the disappointment. God experiences the separation from us. Which means that there's no reason for us not to talk to God about our sins because he already knows and when you talk to God you're not going to get a look of fresh disappointment when you talk to God you're going to meet God with his arms open wide ready to embrace you and to cleanse you of your sins and to forgive you for the things that you have done and to make you new inside and put a new desire in you that you would do holy things rather than unholy things when you sin you might as well talk to God about it because he knows it happened and he is waiting to redeem you he is waiting to set you free he is waiting to transform your life and when you're holding back when you're not talking to God about it, the only person you are hurting is yourself. You are never hurting God more by talking to Him about your sins. You are giving God joy because He loves to build His people up and pull them from the pit and give them what they need that they might not fall in the pit again. Even when I have sinned, God is there and that gives me hope. Now, why does this matter? Why does it really matter that God is everywhere? Because everywhere God is, one of the main attributes that Scripture, that scripture gives to God is that God is love. And everywhere God is, His love is there, too. If you look at Romans 8, it says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor what's going on right now or what's going to come later on the road, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any." Thing else in all of creation that does not give you any wiggle room, that does not create any exceptions. There is nothing in anything that has ever been created that can forcibly separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means that no matter where I go on this earth physically, not only is God there, but God still loves me. Even if I go to a job that everybody mistreats me, God still loves me. God loves me today. He loved me yesterday. He loves me tomorrow. And even before we were made, God loved us. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have ever lasting life and first peter talks about that before the foundations of the earth were laid god made a plan of salvation through christ which means that two thousand years before i was born god loved me enough to die on a cross and thousands and thousands of years before Jesus died on a cross he loved everyone enough that he made a plan of salvation before he even made someone to save no matter where I go when the world ignores me God still loves me when God calls me to talk to my neighbor about Jesus God is there and he loves me when people aren't treating me right god still loves me when thanksgiving and christmas turn into a big drama fest god still loves me when everything falls apart and darkness has covered me i might not understand i might not know i might not have any clue what to do but i can know that god 